We are back, back, back again with yet another level of cryptids to cover. With just a cursory glance, I can only identify a handful of cryptids listed and that truly excites me. Once again, I have separated these beasts into categories and will respect all cultures who specifically request certain cryptids not be spoken of. All that's said and out of the way, let's get right into it. <laughs> The first cryptid of the giant category is Australia's drop bear. Drop bears are a fictional variety of koala bear that are said to be carnivorous. These koalas get their name by waiting for humans or other animals to walk under treetops on which they sit before dropping down on their heads. Scary as that might sound, it is widely believed that accounts of these creatures are fabricated purely to scare tourists. To New Guinea we go to discuss our next cryptid, a giant flying beast called the Ropin. The Ropin, which can be translated to Demon Flyer, is described as a featherless creature with a tail length more than 25% of its wingspan. This beast, be it a giant bat or a pterosaur, generally only shows itself at night and is bioluminescent. The final cryptid of this category is the Van Meter Visitor. These are quite like the Ropin in that they are described as massive bats, but the difference is instead of glowing in the dark, they shoot laser beams from their forehead. You heard me, freaking laser beams from their forehead. This beast first appeared in Van Meter, Iowa, October 1903, and the cryptid is so popular among fanatics that a festival has been held in its name every year since 2016. <laughs> The first sea monster we have in this level of the iceberg is Mexico's water spirit, the Ajuizotl. The Ajuizotl is a spined creature with hands like a raccoon or monkey, waterproof black and gray marbled fur, a prehensile tail, and pointed ears. This protector of lakes is known to snatch humans from the edge of the lake before violently eating their nails, eyes, and teeth. They would lure those poor souls in by imitating a baby's cry. Next, we have the oddest mythological creature I have ever heard of, the barnacle tree. The barnacle tree's lore spans back to the Middle Ages and describes a tree that would sprout shell-like flowers. These shell-like flowers would grow in size and, when opened, baby birds would fall out. They don't sound like sea monsters at first, but these trees are believed to sprout directly from the sea. We go from the bizarre to the interesting with a creature I wouldn't necessarily call a cryptid, the Cyclops shark. In 2011, fisherman Enrique Lucero Leon caught a pregnant dusky shark near Soralvo Island in the Gulf of California and cut it open to find the fetus was abnormal. The pup, the Cyclops shark, had a single eye at the front of its head and was initially believed to be a hoax until it was brought to National Geographic scientists. Turns out, the pup had cyclopia, a rare genetic defect that tends to be fatal. To Australia, we return for the Hook Island sea monster. Monster. This beast was initially sighted off the coast of Hook Island by Robert Lissarek and is described as a 90 foot long serpent with a 4 foot by 4 foot head, smooth skin of a brownish black color, and pale green eyes. Lissarek and his family watched as it rose from the water and swallowed a ship whole before disappearing again under the waves. Many believe the beast to be a hoax, but most won't swim by Hook Island to confirm that. Ooh, ooh. Our next cryptid is one I've heard of in passing, but don't know much about until now. Organism 46B. At some point between February 5th, 2012 and November 30th, 2016, a Russian search team pierced the thick sheet of ice atop Lake Vostok and allegedly unleashed a great beast. The beast was described as a 14-foot tentacled, 33-foot long squid that could shapeshift and spew venom into the water around it to immobilize prey. Per the fantastic testimony of Dr. Anton Padalka, the creature killed a colleague upon discovery with the venom, took another team member by hypnotizing him telepathically, and took a third team member by shapeshifting into a human diver. Dr. Padalka also stated a fourth member was strangled to death by a severed tentacle of Organism 46B before the Russian government captured it in a tank. Right. Moving right along, the final sea monster is Idaho's version of Nessie Charlie. Charlie inhabits Payette Lake and was initially described as an evil spirit by Native Americans of the area. The first sighting on record came in 1920, but it didn't get a description until 1944 or its name until 1946. <laughs> 
The first ET we will discuss at this level of the iceberg basically look like the Navi from Avatar if they were birds, avians. Sightings of these beings date back to ancient Samaria, but the most infamous sighting occurred in far France in 1962. An anonymous businessman named Mr. S was attacked by large, bird-like beings while traveling at night before seeing them disappear into a luminous dark blue object. Our next ET is from the Netherlands and is a perfect example of the atmospheric beasts I spoke of in the last video, Dutch flying jellyfish. DFJs are literally what the name implies and were initially seen by a man named Harry Purton June 1st, 2015. I was taking photos and suddenly something flashed. At first, I thought it must have been my camera, but the flash was not up and there was not a drop on my lens. Though UFO enthusiasts think the pictures Patron took show a spacecraft, Patron himself thinks it's just a rare solar phenomenon. Off to Alabama we go for the Metal Man from Falkville. The Metal Man appeared October 17th, 1973 and was described as wearing a tinfoil suit that was practically luminescent and moved like a robotic child at superhuman speed. All involved with the sighting seemed to suffer a string of horrendous luck and the photograph taken of the ET by Chief of Police Jeff Greenshaw has been highly scrutinized. The final ET we'll discuss in this video is yet another space jellyfish, this time recorded by NASA itself. The first sighting of the NASA atmospheric jellyfish took place October 19th, 1998, and further sightings continue to be reported to this day. Our first land-based beast is the Andean Wolf of the Andes Mountains in Argentina. The lore of this cryptid dates back to 1927 with German animal dealer Lorenz Hagenbach sending pelts he purchased from a Buenos Aires dealer back to Germany. The pelts of the alleged Andean Wolf were initially believed by scientists at the time to be a new reclusive species of Maine Wolf. However, it is currently believed that this is a hoax as samples sent for DNA testing came back as contaminated and there are no further pieces of evidence supporting it. Its existence. Now to Pakistan for yet another Bigfoot cousin, the Barmanu. Barmanu are believed to inhabit the area between Chitral and Kakrakoram, which spans the Pamirs and Himalaya mountains. Searches for this beast began in 1987, but have remained fruitless, some believing it to be the same beast as the Yeti and the Almas of Central Asia. Back to South America we go for by far the saddest cryptid story I've covered to date, the Cerro Azul monster. As the story goes, a group of teenagers were walking near the Cerro Azul cave in Cerro Azul, Panama, September 2009 when they were allegedly attacked by a creature. The creature, which was pale, hairless, snub-nosed, and had long arms, scared the kids so badly that they beat it into oblivion with rocks and sticks. Once a picture of the poor beast taken by the kids started circulating and DNA testing was done, it was determined to be a brown-throated sloth that had been trapped underwater for two days and was already dead when the teenagers found it. Next is the Grassman, which is basically Ohio Ohio's version of Bigfoot. What sets them apart in their description is their tendency to live in nests built from tall grass that look like huts. These beasts were first seen in August 1978 in Minerva, Ohio by a group of kids. Two of these kids were part of the Clayton family who would see the grass band many times after this interaction. Next we have another cryptid from the states that allegedly has ties to the Ottawa tribes, the Michigan Dogman. This creature on paper was first encountered by two Wexford County lumberjacks in 1887 but didn't become popularized until Steve Cook recorded the legend as an April Fool's joke in 1987. Next, we have a cryptid that is very simple to explain, orange alligators. Orange alligators can basically be boiled down to two images of a possible new variant of alligator with orange skin from Florida and South Carolina. Turns out, the pictured gators are probably painted or covered in some sort of sediment. Our next cryptid is arguably the creepiest looking thus far in my opinion, Sheep Squatch. Sheep Squatch hails from West Virginia and is described as a bear-sized quadrupedal beast with a long and pointed head, ram-like horns, saber-like teeth, and a white wool-like fur. Sightings of this creature started in 1994 when a Navy veteran saw it emerge from the forest to drink from a creek. Its lore is apparently so popular that it appeared in a side quest for Fallout 76. Our penultimate cryptid in this category is one derived from a picture of a dead animal, the Titusville Mystery Creature. The TMC picture in question is of a very decomposed four-legged creature taken March 2019 in Titusville, Florida. Though it is definitely odd looking, it is more than likely a possum and not a chupacabra like some have theorized. 
We close this category out with yet another Bigfoot offshoot, this one from Argentina in Chile, the Ucamar. The Ucamar, put simply from what I can gather, looks like man bear pig. Sightings of this creature trace back to 1956 and it is alleged to terrorize locals to this day. The first cryptid of this final category is an internet darling, black stick men. Black stick men are oddly elongated, dark colored creatures believed to be from another dimension that have appeared in a litany of photos from around the world. Though cryptozoologists are really fascinated by this creature, a good chunk of the photos taken of them are confirmed hoaxes. The next cryptid is something straight out of a 1950s horror film, the Cameron Village Sewer Blob. This thing was found by Malfris Construction via a scope put into the Rally North Carolina Carolina sewer system in April 2009. There, they found blobs of unidentified material all over the walls. Though many have tried to explain them away as tube effects, worm sacs, or a colony of bryozoans, the stuff has yet to be conclusively identified. Sticking with blob creatures, we have the Chilean blob. This creature, much like lobsters, was a mass of unidentified DNA weighing 13 tons and measuring at 12 meters in length that washed up in Panuno Beach in Los Muermos, Chile, July 2003. After a year, DNA testing determined it to be a decomposing carcass of a sperm whale. Switching to something completely different, we have dark fairies. Dark fairies are typically believed to be dark elves from Norse mythology, but these pale-skinned, highly aggressive creatures have reportedly been sighted over 450 times throughout the UK over the last century. Even though most experts involved in the research of these sightings generally don't believe in the Fae, they do believe something is going on with the sheer amount of reported sightings. The final creature of this category and this level of the iceberg is shadow people. Shadow people are mist-like, human-shaped beings that are seen worldwide and are believed to come from a shadow realm of sorts. Though fairly aggressive by all accounts, they tend to retreat quickly into the darkness when confronted for the destructive behavior. And with that, we are officially done with level 3. Creatures will certainly be more interesting as we go along, and I am very excited to discover more. Until next time, sweet nightmares. I wanted to take this time to thank my Patreons and channel members. Your support is so greatly appreciated and I can't thank you enough. If you'd like to become a Patreon, there is a link in the description below. And if you'd like to become a channel member, just go ahead and click that join button and join the Truth Sleuths and Horror Hounds. All channel members and Patreons receive 24-hour access to videos prior to their public release and exclusive updates on my progress. After a certain tier, you can request that I do a certain topic or movie review, or you can even request that I do a game live stream, whichever works for you. At the highest tier, you not only get to choose the topic in which I cover, you get to either co-host the stream or the video that I do that covers said topic no matter if it's one or multiple. Of course, this is not obligatory. If you want to support the channel, I greatly appreciate it. And once again, thank you so much.